In this video, I'm going to show you why and how to use effects in Reaper. Now, this is the first video in a series I want to do that focuses on common effects we use in our productions and how to use them in Reaper. But I've made effects videos before. The difference in this series is that I don't want to just focus on how to use these effects, but also why. The first effect we're going to focus on is reverb. I have a project set up here with an acoustic guitar. Let's hear it. And as you could tell, it sounds dry, like it was recorded in a very small room. And if we're happy with that, we could leave it as is. But if we want to make it sound like it was recorded in a bigger room, we should add some reverb. Let's go to the effects button on this track and click it, which opens up this dialog where we could add some effects. Let's go to the Reaper ones and let's choose this reverb right here. Reverbate. Double click it, and that opens this reverb plugin. Let's put the dry sound at zero and adjust the wet sound or reverb level to taste. And we can make the room size smaller over here. Or we can make the room size larger. Or make it really large. And we can increase the dampening to make the room sound darker. Or lessen it to make the room sound brighter. Then down over here, we have two filters. The high pass filter is going to let the high frequencies pass through or rolling off the low frequencies. Making the reverb sound brighter, while the low pass filter lets the low frequencies pass through while rolling off the high frequencies. Creating a darker reverb. Let's make the room a bit smaller. And just to compare, this is what it sounded like before. So let's hear what reverb sounds like on drums. I have a drum recording right here with a kick track, a snare track, and a pair of overheads. Let's hear what it sounds like. Again, it sounds pretty dry, like it was recorded in a small room. So let's add some reverb to make it sound bigger. But instead of putting the reverb on all three separate tracks, let's create a reverb return we can send these tracks to so they can share the same reverb. So let's create a new track down here by double clicking. Let's name it Reverb. And now we can send all these tracks to it. 
but select all these tracks, then go to the routing on any of them, hold down the shift key and drag it to this track. Notice the cursor changes, letting us know we're creating sends. And then let go. And let's add a reverb to this track. Go to the Reaper effects and choose Reverbate again. And this time we'll bring up the wet all the way and bring down the dry. Because the dry sound is coming from the individual tracks and the reverb is coming from the reverb effects return. So let's go to the reverbs routing and we can see the sends we created right here. Let's start them all the way down. And we'll work on the snare first. Let's solo it and let's bring up the send. Let's make the room size a bit bigger. Let's add about the same amount of reverb to the overheads. And finally, with the kick, I usually add a bit less. Let's hear it all together. Without it, Let's try making the room even bigger. Or smaller. We can adjust the dampening. or the filters. Let's try the high pass instead. And without Let's add a bit more. Before. And after. Let's try it on something else. In this project, I have an electric guitar. Let's hear it. Once again, we could put the effect right on the track. Reverberate, bring up the dry, and adjust the wet to taste. Let's make the room bigger. Even bigger. Adjust the dampening. Or the low pass filter. Or the high pass filter. Let's make the room smaller. Let's make it darker. Let's make it much smaller.
and let's adjust the initial delay, which will start the reverb later, creating a slapback effect. Let's remove this filter. Let's bypass the effect and back on. And finally, let's hear it with vocals. We have a vocal track right here. Let's hear it. Let's add the same reverb to this track. Full dry, adjust the wet. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, ah, ah. Let's make the room bigger. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, ah, ah. Let's make it real big. With less dampening. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, ah, ah. Let's filter out the top end. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, ah, ah. Or the low end to make it brighter. Let's make the room a lot smaller. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, ah, ah. And let's add some initial delay. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, ah, ah. Let's make the room bigger. Let's make it even bigger. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, ah, ah. I think you get the idea. Using reverb makes our dry sounds, or the sounds recorded in a small room, sound like they were recorded in a bigger, more open space. Now this is the second video in a series we're doing that focuses on common effects we use in our productions and how to use them in Reaper. But I've made effects videos before. The difference in this series is that I don't wanna just focus on how to use these effects, but also why. In this video, we're gonna focus on delay. Now delay, is similar to reverb, and that they both produce sound that comes after the direct sound, or dry sound, which makes it sound more distant, like it was recorded in a bigger room. The difference is that reverb produces many repeats that are extremely close together, making it sound like room ambience, where delay has more audible repeats, so you can hear each of them separately, like echoes. So I opened up the same acoustic guitar project from the reverb video. Let's hear it again. So let's go to the track effects, go to the reaper effects, and this time we'll choose Rhea Delay, which is a delay plugin that comes with Reaper. Double click it to open it, and it looks like this. We can set the delay time based on eighth notes over here. We'll start out with full dry and adjust the wet to taste. 
which is the delay volume. Notice we could hear a distinct repeat, and it's based on four eighth notes, which is a half note. Let's change it to one eighth note. Now we're just hearing one repeat. If you want to hear more or many repeats, we'll bring up the feedback. And just like with the reverb, we have filters on the delay. The low pass filter passes through the low frequencies and rolls off the high frequencies. And the high pass filter passes through the high frequencies and rolls off the low frequencies. And to hear the filters more clearly, we can solo the delay. Now for the delay musical length, we don't have to use whole numbers for eighth notes. We could use decimals to create a triplet feel. But let's put it back to one eighth note for now, and let's pan it to the left. And let's choose Add Tap, which is going to duplicate a delay settings and pan the second one to the right and change it to two eighth notes or one quarter note. So the first delay will be an eighth note pan to the left and the second delay will be a quarter note pan to the right. And what I usually do is add a reverb after the delays. Double click over here, go to the Reaper effects, and choose Reverb 8. Double click, bring up the dry and adjust the wet to taste. Make the room bigger and adjust the filter. Now let's try adding delay to the electric guitar. Let's hear it now. And let's treat it the same way as we did with the acoustic guitar. Bring down the wet. We'll use eighth notes. Let's add some feedback for more delays. Adjust the filter. And let's pan it to the left and add another one to the right that's a quarter note long. And let's add some reverb to this.
that sounds good as well, but there's another type of delay I want to show you. Let's put the preset back to its default. So everything is starting over. And instead of using a delay length based on eighth notes or musical, we could do it based on time or milliseconds. Let's set it to about 110 milliseconds, which will create a slapback echo or delay. Notice we're not using any feedback because this only needs one delay. Let's filter it a bit. And we can make this stereo as well. Pan it to the left, add another delay or tap. And I like to add about 30 milliseconds to the second one to create a stereo effect. So we'll make it 140 and pan this one to the right. And that's a slapback delay or echo. Let's add some reverb to this. And finally, let's hear some delay on vocals. I have a vocal project right here. And let's try adding both delay types at the same time. I like to set the slapback for vocals to about 180 milliseconds. And let's filter it a bit. Then we can make this stereo by panning this left, adding another delay, pan this one to the right, and let's change this to 210 milliseconds. Then we can add a musical delay on top after the other one. We could set this to two eighth notes or a quarter note, bring down the volume, and bring up some feedback. Let's add in some filters. Now we could hear just the slapback delay or just the musical delay. Now let's add some reverb to both of them. Make the room size nice and big. And now we're using two separate delays and a reverb to create this effect. Now this is the third video in a series we're doing that focuses on common effects we use in our productions and how to use them in Reaper. But I've made effects videos before. The difference in this series is that I don't want to just focus on how to use these effects, but also why. So in this video, we're going to focus on EQ. Now EQ, or equalization, is one of the most well-known forms of audio processing in production. With EQ, we can adjust the volume level of a frequency or a range of frequencies within a sound, which in turn allows us to change the tonal balance of that sound. This is done by boosting desirable frequencies or cutting 
unwanted ones, all to create the type of sound that will fit our mix. So let's start off with some drums. I have a drum project right here with a kick, a snare, and some overheads. Let's hear it. Let's start with the kick. Let's solo it. And let's add an EQ on the track. Let's go to the Reaper effects and let's choose Re-EQ, which is an EQ plugin that comes with Reaper. Double click it. And here's what the plugin looks like. We can make it bigger so we can see more info. A spectrum analyzer will show up over here and the frequencies down here. So let's see and hear the kick. Notice the low end bump over here. Let's try boosting this low end. Notice this boosting is from this frequency on down. That's because this EQ shape is shelving. So if we boost or cut, it's gonna affect that frequency and all the frequencies below it, which is different from this one, which is a band filter or a parametric EQ, which is only gonna boost or cut the frequency we choose and a little bit around it. And the same thing with this one. So let's boost the low end on this kick. And we can bring down the lower mids to make the kick sound fatter. But this cut is too wide. So let's adjust the bandwidth to make our boosting or cutting more narrow. So let's reduce the lower mids. Then we could boost the upper mids to bring out the click or the attack of the kick. But it's a bit too wide, so let's adjust the bandwidth. Which we could also do from here by holding down the shift key. before and after. So let's close it and let's check out the snare. Let's add the re-EQ plugin to this, double click it, make it bigger, and let's see how the snare looks. Let's start with the low end. So let's boost the lower mids instead to bring out the weight or the chestiness in the snare. Then to bring out the crack in the snare, we'll bring up the upper mids. And then to bring out the top end brightness to make it sound pretty, we use the high shelf EQ, which is similar to the low shelf in that it boosts or cuts from that frequency on up, creating a more natural effect.
before and after. Now let's move on to the overheads. Let's add the same EQ. Let's make it bigger and let's hear it. Now I just want to bring out the cymbals. So let's boost the top end. It just makes the cymbals sound prettier. Let's also boost the low end. Before and after. So let's hear it all together. Let's bypass all the EQ. And turn it back on. I think it sounds a lot better. Now let's try adding EQ to an acoustic guitar. I have an acoustic guitar right here. Let's hear it. Let's add the EQ to this track. Let's make this bigger and let's see what it looks like. There's a lot of energy over here that we don't need. So let's change this EQ from a low shelf to a high pass filter so we can roll off the low end. And let's remove some mud by reducing the lower mid range. And let's make it prettier by boosting the high shelving EQ. Let's hear it before and after. And that sounds much better. Let's try it on a vocal. I have a vocal track right here. Let's hear it. Again, we'll put the EQ on the track, re EQ, resize it, and let's hear it. There's not really that much down here, but let's filter it out anyway, as we don't need it. Let's reduce any mud in this range with a lower mid cut. And we could bring out some presence or clarity with an upper mid range boost.
And finally, some top end or prettiness with high shelving EQ. Before and after. It just brings out the frequencies we need while cutting the ones we don't. Now, this is the fourth video in a series we're doing that focuses on common effects we use in our productions and how to use them in Reaper. But I've made effects videos before. The difference in this series is that I don't want to just focus on how to use these effects, but also why. In this video, we're going to focus on compression. Compression is the process of reducing a signal's dynamic range. Dynamic range is the difference between the loudest and quietest parts of an audio signal. We need to reduce the dynamic range so that our instruments sound natural in a mix. For example, if our singer sings softly, that vocal will get lost and overpowered in a dense mix. Well, if our singer starts to belt out very powerful notes, those would overpower our mix. So compression fixes this by adjusting the quieter parts to be louder and the louder parts to be quieter, basically reducing the dynamic range of the performance. This can also be used as an effect to make instruments like drums really pump and sound more aggressive while also reducing their dynamic range. So let's start with some drums. I have a project right here with some drums. We have a kick, a snare, a pair of overheads, and a pair of room mics. Let's hear it. Let's start with the kick. Let's solo it. Let's go to the track effects and go to the Reaper effects, and let's choose the compressor, Rhea Comp, which is a compressor that comes with Reaper. And it looks like this. I'm gonna turn on Auto Makeup Gain, so it'll keep the level even. Then we can adjust the threshold to decide how much gain we're reducing. And we'll see that on this meter. Now I have the ratio set to four to one, which means for every dB, that our signal goes above the threshold, the gain is reduced by this ratio. So if our signal was normally 4 dB louder, now it's only 1 dB louder. So that's how it reduces our dynamic range. Let's hear it. Before and after. Now we could also adjust the attack and release. The attack setting decides how quickly the compressor reacts to the signal. So if we make it slower, the transients or the percussive sounds will be more likely to get through before they're compressed. While if we make it really fast, nothing will get through and the compressor will respond immediately. The release setting is how quickly after the signal goes below the threshold that the compressor stops reacting or compressing. This will be easier to hear when we compress the room mics a bit later. But if we make the release really slow, watch what happens on the meter. The gain reduction stays on for a while. But if we make the release really quick, the gain reduction stops very quickly after the signal goes away. Let's hear our snare. Let's add the compressor to the snare. 
where you comp, turn on auto makeup gain. Adjust the attack. And the release. Before. And after. Let's hear it all together. Now, typically, I don't compress the overheads, but I usually compress the rooms. But instead of using the rear comp compressor for this, I'm going to use a JS plugin called 1175 Compressor, which also comes with Reaper. Again, we'll use 4 to 1 and adjust the threshold and the makeup gain together. Let's adjust the attack. And the release. Let's hear it with the rest of the drums. And let's hear it bypassed and back on. Now, another thing we could do is we can compress all the drums together. As a group, let's make a new track, move it up here, let's name it and make it a folder. So now all these tracks are in this drum folder. So if we compress this track, it's gonna compress all the drums as a group. Let's use the 1175 again. Before and after. Check out how much we can make this pump. Maybe a bit less. Let's compare. And let's bypass everything and hear the difference. It's pretty dramatic what we can do with a compressor. Now let's hear it with some vocals. I have a vocal track right here. Let's hear it. Notice this section is quieter than this one. The same with this one. And this one is quieter than this one. 
so the volume levels are very inconsistent. So let's compress the vocal to make it sound more even. Let's use Rhea Comp again with a fast attack and release and four to one compression. Let's bring up the makeup gain. Before and after. It evens out the volume of the performance. Now this is the fifth video in a series we're doing that focuses on common effects we use in our productions and how to use them in Reaper. But I've made effects videos before. The difference in this series is that I don't want to just focus on how to use these effects, but also why. In this video, we're going to focus on noise gates. A noise gate or a gate is a type of audio effect that is used to control excess noise in an audio signal. When used correctly, a gate will block all unwanted noise while keeping the signal we want. Now we can't separate the noise that's embedded in our audio. There are more surgical tools for that. Instead, it works based on volume. Assuming the sound you want is louder than the noise you don't. So when the sound goes above the threshold we set, the gate opens, allowing sound to come through. When the sound goes below that threshold, the gate closes removing the noise we don't want. For this reason, it's great for things like drums, where we want to limit the amount of leakage from other mics. So our kick or snare mics, for example, will only be playing when the kick or snare drum is actually being played or hit. Although, this will also be useful in a live situation, where you wouldn't want to hear the mics on an instrument or vocals unless they were actually performing or singing into that mic. So let's see how it works with drums. I have a drum project right here with a kick, a snare, a pair of overheads, and a pair of room mics. Let's hear it. And if we solo the kick, we could hear the other drums coming through the kick mic, which is known as leakage. Let's solo the snare. We could hear leakage there as well. So let's start with the kick. We'll go to the effects on this track, go to the Reaper effects, and choose the Rhea Gate plugin, which is a noise gate that comes with Reaper. Double click it, and it looks like this. And over here is the threshold. So when the sound goes above the threshold, the gate opens. And when it goes below the threshold, the gate closes. So let's see it on the meter. And let's adjust the threshold. And once again, if the sound is below the threshold, the gate closes, producing no sound. And when it's above the threshold, the gate opens and we hear our track. Notice we don't hear anything because the threshold is too high. So the gate stays closed. Let's hear it in bypass. Now we could also adjust these parameters to affect the gate. 
The first one is pre-open, which will open the gate a bit early. So we won't cut off our transients. Then we have the attack, which decides how quickly the gate opens. So it can open really quickly or really slow. Let's make it slower or faster. Next, we have the hold and release. Let's start with the hold. And like the name suggests, it'll hold the gate open a bit longer, even after the sound goes below the threshold. So let's make it longer and hear it. And the release decides how quickly the gate closes. So it can close really slow or really quick. Let's try a longer release. And the hold and release really work together. So we could hold the gate open for a certain amount of time and then release afterwards. Let's hear it bypassed. Then we have hysteresis. This allows the gate to open at one level and close at a lower level, depending on the hysteresis setting. In this way, it's not constantly flipping between open and closed if the signal is right around the threshold. Let's bring it down and hear it. Then we have the filters. These allow us to filter our sound completely separately to trigger our gate, which will make it easier if the leakage we're avoiding has certain frequencies in it. And because it's separate, we can preview the filter right here. The low pass filter will filter out the high end and the high pass filter will filter out the low end. And now the filtered sound is going to trigger the gate. But for this, I don't think we need it. Let's move on to the snare. Once again, we'll go to the track effects the Reaper effects, and re -agate. Let's bring up the threshold. Bring up the hold and the release. Let's hear it in bypass. Adjust the hysteresis. And the pre-open to preserve the transients. Adjust the attack. And let's try the filters.
who readjust the threshold. I don't think we need them on the snare either. Now it's here, all the drums together. Let's bypass the gates and back on. They sound a lot cleaner and more separate from the other tracks, which will be more useful when we add other plugins like compression and EQ. We won't be compressing or EQing the leakage because we've removed it with gates. So that's pretty much it. That's how and why to use effects in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh.